My name is Michael McDonough. I'm the Chief Economist for Financial Product uh, at Bloomberg, uh, and I'm going to be moderating or emceeing tonight's event and also moderating a panel later. So first off, thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope everything... Oh. Okay. Wow. This is a great crowd. <laughs> so let me begin uh, by introducing Mr. Shu, who's going to give uh, some welcome remarks. Uh, Mr. Shu started his career uh, at Bank of China in China back in 1990 uh, and since uh, did a lot of really great stuff in China that I'm going to skip over real quick and I'm going to focus then to January 2015 and that was when Mr. Shu was transferred to the U.S. and assumed his role as the President and Chief Executive Officer of Bank of China USA and he now supervises branches in New York Queens, Los Angeles, uh, and Chicago. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite him up to give his remarks, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Dear CGCC members, friends, ladies, and gentlemen, good afternoon. For the fifth consecutive year, CGCC successfully conducted its annual business survey on Chinese enterprises in the United States. Today, we are very pleased to share the findings with all of you. On behalf of CGCC, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all member companies participating in the survey and share their invaluable experiences with no reserve for the benefit of all. We we'll also extend our sincere appreciation to our partner of this year, institutional investor and many individuals who have been supporting us. Our survey confirms Chinese enterprises are committed to long-term goals in the U.S. Despite the slowdown of new Chinese investments into the U.S. in 2017, Chinese operations here continue to grow their business increase export to China, and directly and indirectly support millions of jobs throughout the country. I often see this Chinese investment by American product partner with American companies, export American-made products, create American jobs, benefit American communities, and also pay American taxes. At the moment, despite the enduring progress our countries have achieved. It is clear that U.S.-China relationship is facing incremental challenges and perhaps even roadblocks to further development and cooperation. But CGCC's focus has always been on the big picture. Our goal is to ensure accurate and up-to-date information, such as the data in this report. It's made available to parties at every level of government and business. We believe it is only through direct communication as well as mutual respect and trust we can resolve tensions, pursue compromise, and seek common ground so that we can enhance cooperation, expand economic growth. As the largest nonprofit organization representing Chinese enterprises in the U.S., CGCC aims to enhance cooperation through dialogue and discussion between the U.S. and the Chinese business communities. We proudly serve 1,500 member companies, in which the Chinese member companies have collectively invested over 120 billion U.S. dollars and employ more than 200,000 people throughout the U.S. CGCC will always take proactive approach in promoting better understanding and addressing concerns from all sides. It is our hope that the V will continue to act as a valuable tool for both the business community and the policy makers in the U.S. and China as they map out their corporate strategies and revise government policies that will encourage mutually beneficial cooperation and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you for that. And now I have the privilege of introducing the mastermind behind the report. Hopefully you've all read by now, and if not, you'll definitely will read. There are, I, have got, I got to read it 
a couple days ago, and there's some really interesting factoids in there, which we're about to learn about. And that person is Sam Knox. He's a managing director of the Custom Research Lab at Institutional Investor, uh, a leading business-to-business -business publisher focused on international finance. He's responsible for the development of customized research content and new products for institutional investors' clients collaboration with II's sales and operations teams, and general management responsibilities. And with that, Sam, please come up. Thank you. Well, all right. Thanks very much. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today to brief you on the highlights from this year's uh, study among the membership of the uh, China General Chamber of Commerce. Um, Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Again, my name is Sam Knox, and I am the uh, research partner that worked closely with CGCC in developing this year's report. Uh, as I mentioned today, uh, we're going to hit on the highlights from this, uh, this year's study. Let's get right to it. Uh, here we are. There we go. One more. All right, then. Come on, please. All right, then. Okay. So, now, in each of the past several years, the uh, CGCC has surveyed its membership uh, in an effort to gauge their experience as investors and entrepreneurs here in the United States. Uh, and this year, Institutional Investors Custom Research Lab was uh, absolutely, absolutely delighted to work closely with the CGCC team to review and analyze the data and to conduct a series of uh, interviews to support the uh, publication of this year's report. Now, as we get started, let me, let me offer a bit of, of, of general context for what we see going on in the outside world. Now, as you see on the slide here, we've got a combination of chaos on one hand and day-to-day -day commerce on the other. And they are, in some respects, colliding in a way that creates a, a, a highly dynamic environment for investors here in the United States and companies that are trying to to operate and to expand um, uh, in the uh, foreign direct investment uh, environment. We live in a very complicated and per, uh, perhaps chaotic time, several factors of which have really borne down on foreign direct investment in the last year. For example, the Chinese government has uh, tightened its policies on uh, outbound flows of capital into the United States. The U.S., for its part, has brought a new level of scrutiny to the uh, Chinese investments in U.S. companies through the, through the CFIS reviews. Here in the U.S., we have, on one hand, a strong domestic economy. We have a new administration in Washington. And I think it's fair to say that we have a new mindset at the federal level about the United States about its role in the uh, global economy, and, in fact, the role of the executive branch in commercial and trade matters. So as a result of all of these factors, we see a steep decline in uh, uh, Chinese investment here in the United States uh, in 2017. If you measure the number of transactions, it fell by approximately 30 percent. If you measure in currency units, it's, it falls uh, far more steeply by as much as 80 or 90 percent. Then most recently, we have saber rattling and more threats of tariffs and import duties, um, and indeed the prospect of a trade war with the United States' closest, uh, closest commercial partners, including China. But regardless of your political views, day-to-day -day work continues. Everyone gets up and goes to work. They do the best they can with the work that lies ahead. We do research. We develop new products. We manufacture them. We buy them and we sell them. We hire staff. We make deals. Uh, and all the other components of day-to-day -day commercial activity. And amid this dynamic environment, um, the day-to-day -day work of commerce continues. Companies continue to seek to develop new and better offerings to uh, sell to their current and, uh, and to new clientele or, and customers. With all of this in mind, this fifth study uh, gives us a platform from which we can look at the experience of Chinese companies investing here in the United States, their experience as entrepreneurs, and uh, hopefully to offer 
views on what they see and hope to have changed in the years ahead, both from their own activities and from, uh, from a uh, greater role from the Chinese government and the U.S. government as well. Now, the methodology for this study is that we uh, conducted a study, uh, as, that is a survey, among about 249 uh, members of the CGCC, and we supplemented it with a series of, uh, series of interviews with well-known uh, CGCC members and senior executives from, uh, from investing companies here in the United States. Um, let's get right into some of the, you know, the uh, highlights and the top line findings. Uh, first, by discussing some of the intentions. That is, why do companies come to invest, uh, why do Chinese companies come to invest here in the United States? A whole lot of different reasons, but more than anything else, the dominant theme that we see is that they seek to engage and participate in the global economy. It's a logical component of China's broader economic liberalization over the past, uh, over the past generation. In the survey itself, we queried on this topic, and as you can see, as you can see, uh, respondents are most concerned with, most, concern, most concerned with the, uh, with cultivating brand recognition Of course, it's over here. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Companies are most concerned with cultivating brand recognition and uh, strengthening their international reputation. They also seek to share knowledge and, and expertise with, uh, with companies here in the United States. That's both technological knowledge and expertise, along with uh, the, the management principles and practices that underlie managerial capitalism here in the United States. They seek to serve global markets, both, uh, both, both uh, organically themselves and as a valued partner to other Chinese firms that are seeking to, to uh, participate more broadly in the, uh, in the global economy. And they learn a great deal here in the United States, not just technical matters, how to manufacture more effectively, how to use a particular type of technology, but also about uh, managerial expertise. How do you run a large global organization? And they come here to learn about how to build a company into a responsible global, uh, into a responsible global institution. One of the sources that we interviewed was a uh, vice president of branding at Fosun International, uh, a very large Chinese company that has uh, operations around the world, owning um, everything from Club Med to a, uh, a bunch of very high-end luxury brands and so on. And she points out that global companies need to assume the responsibility of global citizens. And she seeks to learn more from them. And that will, by doing so, it will help them grow and emerge as a truly uh, uh, responsible and high-performance uh, global company. Now, a couple of other key points. When companies come here, they face a choice. They uh, typically have a, have a choice between a greenfield investment where they establish a new company or they acquire another company. And I'd like to go through first the greenfield and then the, uh, the acquisition strategies and the benefits of them. First of all, with greenfield investments, um, uh, the survey data indicates that the greatest benefit, the, 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 the greatest advantage to greenfield investment is it offers a level of managerial control and also access to federal and state uh, incentives from the, uh, from the government. Uh, in the report, you'll read about a company called Jushi Fiberglass Inter uh, uh, International and its U.S. subsidiary, Jushi USA. They have invested through a greenfield operation. They've invested about $300 million in South Carolina. They had a very strong competitive position worldwide, and they worked closely with the state of South Carolina to identify a site and the, all the various different uh, 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 permits and infrastructure improvements that would allow them to build and establish a highly successful uh, enterprise here in the United States. So that's the greenfield strategy. Now, on the acquisition side, um, acquisitions are preferred, according to uh, respondents, Acquisitions are preferred uh, by about 28% of, of respondents. Why? What's the great benefit? Well, first of all, they get turnkey production capacity right away and top-line growth. You buy a company and you own it. 
whether you buy as a, as a stock purchase or an asset sale. Um, and by doing so, they, they are able to instantly and, uh, uh, have, a, have a, you know, an operating organization here in the United States on which they can build. And that's what we heard consistently over and over again. It's through the combination, the strategically smart combination of assets, buying, say, two companies, three companies, combining them together in a strategically intelligent way that yields something of far greater value. One other important piece of the acquisition strategy is its ability to, uh, to overcome a lot of the regulatory hurdles and the so-called license to operate that is required here in the United States. In the report, we talk about the case of uh, International Vitamin Corporation. They are now in the business of uh, over-the-counter drugs and uh, generic uh, drug manufacturing, and their products are available all throughout the country. To get there, they were able to, uh, to purchase uh, uh, several different companies um, and glue them together. As our uh, source tells us here, the, the industry has very high barriers to entry, and it's subject to lots of oversight and regulation by the Federal uh, Food and Drug Administration and other authorities. By acquiring an existing company that already had that infrastructure in place, they were able to, they were able to save several years, of, uh, several years of time and effort and so on. In addition, they acquired a very high performance team and it gave them ultimately a, uh, a well-established platform from which they could expand. Now, the benefit to the United States that flows out of all this is manifold. As uh, we heard a few minutes ago, the CG CGCC membership companies, those member companies employ uh, 200,000 or more workers here in the United States. These greenfield investments pump an enormous amount of money into the, uh, uh, into the local economies. Jushi uh, USA in uh, South Carol Carolina invests $300 million and will employ uh, 800 people locally right in, uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, uh, Zing Chao Energy purchased an oil field uh, uh, license in Texas for $1.3 billion and has spent another $1.1 billion in further infrastructure improvements. They uh, have created as many as 120 jobs directly, not to mention approximately 2,000 uh, daily, uh, daily workers working as contractors uh, in professional services or on-site support work. One last point to mention here is a company called Foyeo Glass Company. They bought a General Motors plant in Dayton, Ohio, and brought it back to life with a $600 million investment. It now employs 2,100 workers. All of this activity yields recapitalization of companies here in the United States. It puts a great many people to work, and it also contributes um, to the exports from the United States which ultimately uh, go in the United States' favor in uh, the, the so-called balance of trade. Now, we queried in the study, we queried uh, the CGCC membership about the uh, strengths and weaknesses. What, is it, what are their opinions of the U.S. Business, business climate? Now, I realize this is hard to read. You can certainly see it in greater detail in the report. Broadly speaking, they have a very, very positive, solidly affirmative uh, uh, point of view on things like the professionalism of companies here in the United States, the business integrity, the capacity to innovate and develop new products, transparency in the judicial environment, all receive very high marks from the uh, survey respondents. As you scroll down, however, you can see down at the bottom things really deteriorate when we get to some of the complicated relationships between commercial enterprises and the United States government, either the federal government or state and local authorities. And so um, we hear fairly clearly in some of the calls for recommendation and change, we hear fairly clearly about an aspiration and a desire for uh, a shift in U.S. policy on a couple of key issues, which we can touch on in our final, uh, final segment here. Broadly speaking, the respondents say that they are hoping for a greater level of cooperation and collaboration between the Chinese government, the United States government, and the various different companies that are, that are investing here in the United States. And in particular, they are concerned about the L-1 visa program, which makes it very difficult 
uh, for uh, expatriate executives or technical, uh, technical personnel to come and work here in the United States. It is, a, it is a lengthy process, it is filled with uncertainty, and it takes, uh, you know, it takes both cost and time and has a real opportunity cost. We hear this consistently in the various different interviews that we have conducted. They call on the federal government to relax industrial regulation, as most companies do, whether they're U.S. or, or, or from overseas. And they call for uh, improved communication opportunities between the U.S. government and the Chinese, uh, and the, uh, Chinese investment companies. Now, on the other, other side of this relationship, we have the relationship with uh, the Chinese government. And here, the respondents say quite stridently that they encourage the uh, uh, the Chinese government to work closely with the U.S. government to streamline the visa review and approval process and the various investment reviews like CFIS um, and to provide a more transparent investment climate and environment so that there is a greater, sh uh, greater flow of information and decisions can be made more quickly and with less uncertainty and ultimately with less cost. Those are the highlights of the study. Now, the report itself gets into it in much greater detail. We've got uh, all the charts and graphs anyone could ask for. In addition, lots of commentary from case studies and uh, uh, the, the very generous comments from the membership in the, uh, 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 of the CGCC who participated in the interview program. And as I wrap up now, allow me to thank everyone who completed the questionnaire and all of the uh, executives who spoke with us on the record for this study.